Hello everyone and welcome to another video. This one is going to be on one of my favorite topics, polymer coatings. Now I must be the last person on YouTube talking about Tesla's battery day and their new battery technology is coming out that will allow them to achieve over 520 miles of range in the Plaid Model S. There were several key advancements that they announced, but in this video we will focus on one particular piece of the puzzle that is stabilizing the silicon anode particles with a polymer coating. Here we will discuss what are polymer coatings to begin with, how they are relevant to battery electrodes, what are the key performance criteria, and what Tesla is doing in this area to improve their batteries. If you stick around until the end of the video, I promise you will learn something new about the subtleties of battery design. So let's get started by first recapping what Tesla announced at the 2020 battery day. So we have a manufacturing system, we've got a cell design. What are the active materials we're going to put in that cell design? Let's talk about the anode first. Let's talk about silicon. Why is silicon awesome? It's awesome because it's the most abundant element in the Earth's crust after oxygen, which means it's everywhere. It's sand. Yeah. Um, sand is silicon dioxide. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and it happens to store nine times more lithium than graphite, which is the typical anode material in, in lithium-ion batteries today. So why isn't everybody using it? The re main reason is because the challenge with silicon is that it expands 4x when fully charged with lithium. And basically, all, all of that expansion stress on the particle, the particles start cracking, they start electrically isolating, you lose capacity, the energy retention of the battery starts to fade. And it, it also gums up with a passivation layer that has to keep reforming as the particles expand. And current approaches to solve this, which exist, I mean, we have silicon in, in the cars that you're all in right now, are involved highly engineered, expensive materials uh, in, in the scheme of things. Now, they're still great, and they enable some of the benefits of silicon. They just don't enable all of it, and they're not scalable enough. And you can see some of the things that, that maybe you've heard of, SIO, silicon with, with carbon or silicon nanowires. I mean, that's kind of the space right now. What we're proposing is a step change in capability and a, and a step change in cost. And what that really is, is to just go to the raw metallurgical silicon itself. Don't engineer the base metal. Just start with that and design for it to expand in how you think of the, the particle in the electro design and, and how you, you code it. Yeah, I'm not sure if you saw those, basically a dollar uh, for kilowatt hours, yep. um, this, basically, if, if, you, if, you, if you use simple silicon, it's dramatically less than even the silicon that is currently used in the batteries that are made today. Um, and you can use a lot more of it. And how does it work? Start with raw metallurgical silicon, stabilize the surface with an elastic ion conducting polymer coating that is uh, applied through a very scalable approach. Um, no, no, no like chemical vapor deposition, no highly engineered high, high capex solutions and then integrated in the electrode through a robust network formed out of a highly elastic binder. Um, and in the end, by leveraging this silicon to its potential, we can increase the range of our vehicles by an additional 20%, just this uh, improvement. Yeah, it gets cheaper and longer range. So Tesla claims that they can switch to more silicon-based anode materials by minimizing the processing steps, which include a polymer coating to stabilize the particles. The particles are then embedded into a polymer binder so that it may be cast into sheets that get wrapped around in a cell. So there is a coating component and a binder component, both of which are important for increasing the performance of the battery. Now before we proceed further, we need to briefly discuss how a battery works. On one side we have a cathode and on the other side we have an anode. The anode is typically graphite, which is very inexpensive and abundant but can hold relatively low amounts of lithium. On the other side, we have a cathode that receives the lithium as the battery is discharged. In the middle, we have a separator that only allows the passage of lithium ions and physically separates the cathode and the anode. This whole construct is immersed in a liquid organic electrolyte that facilitates the ion transport from one side to another. In this diagram, the atomic scale picture is shown. But at the macroscopic level, we have small particles that form a powder, which then makes up the electrode. And here you can see why a binder is needed in the first place. The powders are essentially sand-like, and to make a stable sheet out of them, we need to give them some mechanical support allowing them to stick to each other, which comes from the addition of the polymer binder. This video focuses on those components of the battery, 
such as the binder and the coatings that everybody forgets. Sure. Yes. So first, before we get too far into it, let's talk about what is in a battery cell. We've got the cap and the, and the can, negative and positive terminals of the cell. When you open that cell, you've got a tab connected to those terminals, what we call the jelly roll, which is the wound electrodes on the inside. Um, you can actually see what this looks like as you unwind it. This is over a meter long in a typical 2170 cell. So it's quite a long wi winding process. Um, and, and you can see the tab still there. Um, and then, what, to explain what's actually going on here, we've identified we've got anode, cathode, separator, positive and negative terminal. Watch what happens as we, uh, there we go, discharge the cell. Got lithium moving from anode to cathode. And then the reverse, when we charge the cell, anode moving from, uh, lithium moving from cathode to anode across the separator. This is the basic of what makes all lithium ion batteries, whether they're, what, no matter what the form factor is. And when we look at what, what's happened to date, at least in our products, we've moved from the 18650 form factor to the 2170 form factor through great collaboration with our partners. Now to increase the battery's performance, you can take two major steps. First, you can increase the amount of lithium in the battery. This is where moving to silicon anodes comes in, because silicon can hold several times more lithium than graphite. Second, you can reduce the internal resistance of the cell. Here, we have to take a step back to the fundamental process that enables lithium ion batteries. That is this. Lithium metal gives up its electron and becomes lithium plus one ion. And the negative electron released from that lithium is then pushed through the current collector and then into the circuit to power your device. We want this process to be as efficient as possible. And any obstacle that impedes this process adds to the internal resistance of the cell. For example, the particle-particle interconnects in this picture have to be quite intimate. And as we will see, polymer coatings and binders play a critical role in determining how well this process can happen. Let us first consider the major problem with using silicon. While silicon can hold more lithium than graphite, its major drawback is that it undergoes a significant volume change as the lithiation and delithiation process occurs. You can see in the part C of this image that as the silicon gets more and more lithiated, it swells and becomes larger relative to the pristine silicon. This expansion of the electrode causes major internal mechanical stresses that can lead to degradation of the electrode resulting in capacity fade. Any coating or binder put in place to stabilize the silicon must be able to handle this expansion and contraction of the silicon as the battery is charged and discharged. The most common binder used currently for batteries is PVDF or polyvinylidene fluoride. Polymers are long spaghetti-like molecules shown here in blue that can form a mesh for the electrode particles to sit in. And PVDF is a very mechanically, chemically, and thermally stable polymer, which makes it a good candidate for a binder. This is primarily because the PVDF molecule contains the CF bonds or carbon-fluorine bonds that are very stable. These bonds make up Teflon, which you may know to be a very stable and inert material. However, the big drawback of using PVDF is that it is not a good conductor of ions or electrons. Since any electrode consists of up to a few percent of binder, this adds to the overall internal resistance of the cell. But Tesla claims that they are using a mechanically robust binder that is capable of handling the large volume changes associated with silicon anodes. Now let us consider the polymer coating that Tesla says it uses to stabilize the silicon, but we will begin by discussing what a polymer coating is. A polymer coating consists of a thin layer of material deposited on the surface of the silicon particle. This coating must allow for the transport of lithium and electrons through it while accommodating the expansion and contraction cycles during the charge and discharge process. Of course, the coating must be electrochemically and thermally stable and must not react with any other battery components. There are a few different choices for conducting polymers to be used as coatings, 
but each have their own issues with processing and stability. But based on the presentation, it appears that Tesla has found a formulation of a conducting polymer coating that works well enough for their purposes. If these challenges of conductivity, stability, and mechanical properties were not already difficult enough, the coating must also mitigate or control the formation of the SEI layer or the secondary electrode interface layer. Now the SEI requires its own explanation, but to put it briefly, it is a passivating layer that forms on the electrode surfaces. It is the result of degradation products within the battery, the details of which will be part of a future video. Some SEI is actually desirable, but it can increase the internal resistance of the cell if its formation becomes uncontrolled. It appears that Tesla is leveraging the polymer coating to reduce the formation of uncontrolled SEI. So the question now is how do you coat particles at scale with quality control? Tesla specifically mentions that they are using a scalable manufacturing process and I suspect that it is a spray drying approach. This involves suspending the particles in a liquid coating solution and then quickly drying it out by ejecting it through a nozzle under heat and or reduced pressure. This allows the carrier solvent to dry out while leaving the polymer coated on the particle surface. This process is inexpensive and it is already used as a manufacturing technique in industry. Well, there you have it, a high-level overview of how polymer binders and coatings play a role in improving the performance of batteries. If you found any part of this video useful and feel like you have learned something important about how batteries operate, then please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to help it out in the future. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. See you all in the next video.